What's going on guys, it's CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the second generation game shell from Clockwork Pi. In July of 2018 I actually did a review and assembly guide on the original game shell straight off of Kickstarter. I absolutely love the console, it served me very well, but they did upgrade it pretty quickly. Basically, there are only two real differences between the first generation and the second generation. The first one being, second generation has 1 gigabyte of RAM, where the first one had 512 megabytes, and we also have HDMI on the new version. In all actuality, this was an unneeded upgrade. HDMI out from the built-in CPU isn't going to do much at 60 FPS, and adding an extra 512 megs of RAM really isn't going to help out with emulation either unless they take the time and money to develop the software even further, and they could have done that with the original game shell without having to upgrade anything at all on the unit. I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the specs here. This is the main board. This is a fully modular system. You're going to have to put it together yourself. For the CPU, we have a quad-core 1 gigahertz all-winner R16J Cortex-A7 CPU. Now, this is definitely not a powerhouse, but it is more powerful than the Raspberry Pi Zero. For the GPU, we have the older Mali 400 MP2. It is a dual core GPU, but it will only do up to OpenGL 2.0, which is perfect for the emulators we're gonna be running here. Like I mentioned, this one has one gigabyte of RAM. It's just a single DDR3 module, micro HDMI, micro USB, 3.5 millimeter audio jack out, and we also have SD card support. That's what our whole operating system and everything's gonna run off of. Ever since I originally saw the game shell on Kickstarter, I fell in love with this idea. Fully modular design, you're going to build it in little tiny modules, then you're going to put it all together, boot it up, and start playing your favorite retro games. I do have a full assembly video on my channel, I'll link it in the description. It's really easy to put together, they do have full color instructions, so here's one module going together. You're just going to piece it together, this is the keypad or the gamepad, whatever you want to call it. Everything snaps right in place, we're going to throw our buttons on, and when we're finished with all of the modules, we're going to put the whole unit together, and it's going to look something like this. The kits do come with a pre-programmed 16 gigabyte SD card. There are no ROMs on it. There's a few freeware games on here that you could play right out of the box, but you'll have to add your own games. So going from the original game shell to this one with one gigabyte of RAM, you're not going to notice a performance boost. Now, you might be able to run multiple applications, but 512 megs of RAM was plenty for what we need to do on this unit. So if you back the Kickstarter and you're stuck with the original unit without HDMI and 512 megs of RAM, I wouldn't worry about upgrading here. HDMI output on this isn't great right now and it's all due to software. If the developers of the game shell took the time and the money that they put into making the one gigabyte version and put that into development on the original version, we'd have an awesome little unit. So here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison. First gen is on the left. Second gen is on the right. They already had the cutout for the HDMI, so this was pretty much planned the whole time. So I love this Clockwork Pi OS. That's what I'm going to call it. I love the look of it. It's very minimalistic. It works well with the hardware we have. We have a few sections in here. As you can see, there's a few preloaded freeware games that you can play right out of the box. Tiny Cloud's going to allow you to connect over Wi-Fi or USB over Ethernet to load your games on here. So all of the emulators used on the game shell are using Libretro cores, otherwise known as RetroArch cores. And the developers over there are not specifically looking at the RJ16, the CPU that's in here, and trying to optimize different cores for this system here. That's up to the maker or the manufacturer of the game shell. So this is just using out-of-the-box cores here on this hardware. And some of the stuff doesn't run well, like Game Boy Advanced or Genesis in my experience. There's a few cores we can test here, and I'm not going to test every single one of them on camera, but I've gone through the gamut, and I cannot get good performance out of Genesis or Game Boy Advance. But if you want to do some older MAME 2003 stuff, some FBA, some Neo Geo, SNES, PC Engine, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, um, Super Graphics... It's going to work fine. There are literally thousands and thousands of retro games that are going to play at full speed on this unit, but you will run into some that just don't perform well. I'm going to get into a little bit of gameplay here. We're using the SNES 9X 2005 core, and this is Mega Man X2. I do have the FPS listed in the lower left-hand corner. This is just using the built-in RetroArch FPS counter. We're at 60 here, and it does a pretty decent job, but it does take a couple seconds to update. I haven't noticed any major drops with SNES. Everything that I've tested works fairly well.
Super Graphics is another one that works fine on here. You'll see that FPS jump back up to 60. The speakers sound great on this, and it does handle PC Engine or Super Graphics really well. PCSX is also listed in the game section. This is a PS1 emulator. I do have frame skip turned on. This is Bloody Roar 2. It's not going to run it at full speed without frame skip, and you'll still see some dips here in this video. The built-in Game Boy Advance emulator is going to struggle with certain games. Like, if you want to play Pokemon, it's going to be fine. It's not a fast-paced game, but here's uh, Sonic Advance, Sonic Advance 3. And you'll notice the frame rate will dip to around 54 in some sections, and the sound gets a little wonky. So that extra 512 megs of RAM that they added to the second version isn't going to help out with emulation much. The final thing I wanted to test out was the HDMI out performance, and from what I've tested, it's not looking great right now. There are two GPU drivers that we can choose from, and I'm going to test both of them in this video in case anybody mentions that. We have the first one, I'm just going to go with Game Boy Advance, which doesn't perform well on the internal screen, so I don't think we're going to get great performance through HDMI out at a higher resolution. And HDMI out defaults to 720p. Unfortunately, I couldn't pick up sound over my Elgato game capture. I was just going to capture a real clean image. Instead, I had to film the screen. And as you can see, really low performance. I'm going to back out of here and swap the GPU driver. All right, so we're using the Lima or the Lima GPU driver now. We're gonna get right back into Game Boy Advance, same exact game. So some of the other stuff does work great over HDMI, like Cave Story and Doom. But if we have RetroArch set with the XMB theme, which I like to use, it's pretty much unusable over HDMI, no matter which GPU driver I'm using. It takes a few seconds to register an input. And that's about it. So in my opinion, I mean, HDMI on this was the last thing they needed to worry about. What they need to do is develop more for the unit. So if you're interested in upgrading your first generation game shell with one gigabyte of RAM and HDMI out, you can buy the board itself for $49 on their website, or you can buy a whole unit for $159. So like I mentioned, there are thousands and thousands of retro games that are gonna play perfectly fine on the game shell. Game Boy Advance is not one of them, and in my experience, Sega Genesis is another one that's gonna struggle. I know there's going to be some game shell owners out there that are going to dislike this video because it sounds like I'm knocking the game shell. I love the game shell. The problem is they released an upgraded version a few months after their Kickstarter 
and it's really not an upgrade. They need to focus their time and energy on software, not new hardware. That's all there is to it. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you're interested in learning more, I'm going to leave a link to the GameShell website. And like always, thanks for watching.